Cool. If your name is Karen, I'm really sorry, but you don't come out well in this at all. What? Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Heath with Tyg. I teach science in such a way that if you're using this for revision, your mum is about to give out to you because you look like you're enjoying yourself. So stop enjoying yourself. Don't you know revision is supposed to be miserable? So if that's you right now and you have to explain to your parents that you are actually learning science, make sure hit that subscribe button. I will also cover for you if you are legitimately procrastinating. Yeah, boy. So the topic of today's video is the structure of the atom. I've actually made a couple of videos that are really closely linked to this, so it's worth checking out the playlist linked on screen. And if you watch to the end of this video, I'll give you another bonus tip for your exams. So let's start off with the basics of an atom. It's made of three subatomic particles. You've got protons, which are really positive. You've got neutrons, which are neutral. And you've got electrons, which are negative. For some reason in chemistry, we always seem to end up focusing on those negative electrons rather than looking at the protons. But it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> now protons and neutrons, they exist inside in this place called the nucleus of the atom. It's where it holds the majority of the mass. All those negatives, they're just floating around the outside. Just like negative people in real life, they just occupy the space. And we give them a lot of space. Ooh. Now the thing about atoms is, for every positive we have, we also have a negative. It's a bit like real life. For every positive person there is in the world, there's a Karen asking for the manager. It just seems to balance out. Now just like in real life, negative people seem to be attracted towards positive people. The weird thing though is Karens always seem to repel other Karens. They tend to push each other away. But the fact that Karen repels other Karens keeps them all at a distance. Well, we could say the exact same thing about atoms. The number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Opposite charges tend to be attracted towards each other, whereas similar charges seem to repel. That's why electrons exist in shells. It's also why they've got so much space. If an atom was to gain an electron, it means it's after taking in something that's negative, which turns it into a negative ion. But if it loses an electron, it means it's lost something that's negative and therefore it becomes a positive ion. Now earlier I said that protons and neutrons have to be balanced in an atom. And every element has a different number of protons, which we can see on the periodic table. It's the smaller number you see on any element. Now in an exam, you could use those numbers to draw the electron configuration. When it comes to the electrons, we put two electrons in the first shell, we put eight electrons in the second, and we can put eight in the third. They're not gonna ask you to draw any more than 20. You also don't have to draw the protons and neutrons, you just just put the symbol in the middle. So the biggest thing you'll probably have to draw will be calcium at 2882. My recommendation is to practice drawing the first 20. Okay, enough talking from me. Let's have a go at trying to draw one of these. So here's oxygen. You'll see it's got 16 on top and eight down below. So based on what I told you, have a go at drawing it. Remember, you can only put two electrons in the first shell and then you can fill up to eight in the second. And if needs be, you can fill up to eight in the third. I'll just wait here, I guess. Okay, we start by putting the symbol in the middle of the nucleus, so that's the O. Then on the first shell, we can put two electrons in. And then in the second shell, we're gonna put six. Reason being, oxygen only has eight electrons. So two in the first and six in the second makes eight. So that's nice and straightforward. And let's get into some bonus tips for this topic. If you're someone who always struggles to remember how many shells you need to draw and how many electrons to put in each, here's a quick tip. When you look at the periodic table, it's split into different groups. You also have these things called periods. They're basically the different rows that exist on the table. Well, you could say that the group tells you how many electrons are in its outer shell and the rows tell you how many shells there are. So if I look at potassium, I see it's in the fourth row and it's in group one. That tells me it's got four shells and then it's got one electron in its outer shell. It's also got the number 19. So I know I have to have 19 electrons in this diagram. So I put one in the outer shell, I put two on the very inside shell and then I know the second and third shell can only have eight. And that will bring me to 19. The one cache to remember is that group zero is technically also group eight, which means it's got eight electrons in its outer shell and the next shell would have zero. My second bonus tip is using those numbers to be able to calculate the number of neutrons, something they love to bring up in the exam. So if we look at that atomic mass number, which is the bigger number on the element, it tells you how many protons and neutrons there are in that nucleus. Now, if we take away the smaller number, which is the number of protons, it's gonna leave us with the number of neutrons. And that's how you find out the number of neutrons as well. It's really important to remember that the number of neutrons in an element doesn't necessarily have to stay the same. There could be different variations of that same element that has different numbers of neutrons. We call those isotopes and I'll cover them in my next video. If you enjoyed that video guys make sure to hit that like button and click subscribe and if you're doing your exams please share this video with a friend, help them with their science too or check out some of my other science videos to help you with your revision. But for now let's be like protons and stay positive. And let's go past them GCSEs. I'm the one, the way your son don't need a gun to get respect up on the street.